Kobe Bryant is regarded as one of the best basketball players of all time. Not only was he loyal to the Lakers for 20 years, he was loyal to the everyday grind and making the name Kobe mean something to people. And he was much more beyond an athlete. We're going to look at his life story and then I'm going to give you my analysis on what makes him iconic. This is the iconic story of Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on August 23, 1978. His parents, Joseph Bryant and Pamela Cox Bryant, named him after Japanese Wagyu beef. His father, Joseph Bryant, was an NBA player who also played in Europe. Encouraged by his father to follow in his footsteps, Kobe Bryant started playing basketball at the early age of three years old. As a child, Kobe would watch his father play on TV and he'd get a basketball and pretend to play along with the team in his living room. Growing up, Kobe's childhood was not spent in the United States. When he was six, his father retired from the NBA and pursued a professional basketball career in Italy, taking his family with him. They traveled often, living in Reggio Calabria, then Pastoia, and Reggio Emilia. Throughout this time, Kobe learned to speak fluent Italian. Much of Kobe's childhood was spent practicing basketball, learning about basketball, and even studying NBA tapes sent to him by his grandfather. Every summer, they came back to the States to play in a prominent basketball league called the Sunny Hill League, where both his father and uncle played as all-time greats. So with that said, and you know him being Kobe Bryant, he was probably scoring left and right. So let's hear him talk about it. And here I come playing, and I don't score one point the entire summer because I was terrible. Really? Yeah. I think that's when the idea of understanding a long-term view became important because I wasn't going to catch these kids in a week. I wasn't going to catch them in a year. The hard work and fundamentals had a compound effect over the next two years, and it helps that he also had a growth spurt around this time to increase his athleticism. At 6'6", and with solid coordination and mindset, he became the best in the state by 14. I turned 14. I became the best player in the state. And it happened in two years. And I wasn't expecting it to happen in two years, but it did because what I had to do was work on the basics and the fundamentals. Eventually, Kobe Bryant attends Lower Marion High School, where he would go on to play on the varsity team as a freshman, which had not happened in decades. His high school coach, Greg Downers, commented on his work ethic. He hated to lose. Some great athletes hate to lose more than they love to win. He was the first guy to practice and the last guy to leave. The Aces of Lower Marion struggled in Kobe's first year, but the team dramatically improved. And in Kobe's junior season, he averaged 31.1 points per game. He was named Pennsylvania Player of the Year in the process and helped guide the team to its first state title in more than 40 years. Kobe Bryant scored a total of 2,883 points during his high school career. Despite having plenty of college offers, Bryant made the decision to go directly into the NBA, becoming only the sixth player in NBA history to do so at the time. In 1996, Bryant was 17 and needed his parents to co-sign the Lakers contract. Once he turned 18, he signed the contract himself and locked in his three-year rookie contract, totaling at $3.5 million. In 1998, he was the youngest NBA starter. With a bright future ahead of him, it was very exciting when the Lakers played the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan faced young Kobe Bryant. But Kobe was smart. He did not see Michael Jordan as the enemy, but someone who he thought could bring the most out of him. I found that he was extremely open 
um, to having a relationship, a mentor relationship, and giving me a great amount of advice. He and then teammate Shaquille O'Neal led the Lakers in three consecutive NBA championships from 2000 to 2002. In 2001, he got married to now Vanessa Bryant, had their first daughter, Natalia, in 2003, and around this time began calling himself the Black Mamba after Kill Bill because it embodied his killer mindset during game time. In Africa, the saying goes, in the bush, an elephant can kill you, a leopard can kill you, and a black mamba can kill you. But only with the mamba is death sure. Hence its handle, death incarnate. In 2006, in a comeback victory against the Toronto Raptors, Kobe scored a career high of 81 points, only behind Wilt Chamberlain's 100. His second daughter, Gianna, was also born this year. In 2008, he was recognized as the NBA's most valuable player and was a member of the U.S. men's basketball team where he won an Olympic gold medal later that year and then again consecutively in 2012. In 2009 and 10, he won two more NBA championships and wanted a sixth in order to match Michael Jordan because he was always being compared to him as one of the greatest. Michael Jordan for me was always you know, the person that inspired me the most and saying, okay, a black athlete can reach the masses and inspire the masses on a global scale. Throughout his career, he accumulated many injuries, but that did not stop the mamba mentality of Kobe. On December 14, 2014, he passed Michael Jordan with 32,310 career points to become the third on the NBA's all-time scoring list. A couple months later, he has surgery on his right rotator cuff, and he still had pain in his Achilles, knees, back, all while playing in his final season. The consequence of the hard training and gameplay to be the best. On April 13, 2016, he scored 60 points in his last game to defeat Utah Jazz at 101 points to 96. This year, he also had his third daughter, Bianca. He now had time for his family and to work on his other passion that he had been working on in the background, which started early on in his life. I had a great speaking arts teacher who taught how to structure story, how to write story. You know, the world revolves around storytelling, and so it serves an important role in our society at large. I get excited to try to you know, play my small part in it. Kobe launched Granity Studios in 2013, which now has books, podcasts, and other media with the mission to awaken the imagination of young athletes and foster emotional and mental development that allows them to reach their full potential. In 2017, the Lakers retired both jersey numbers. Around this time, Kobe also released the film Dear Basketball, which won an Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. In 2018, he released his book, The Mamba Mentality, How I Play, which is an account of his own story in basketball and is meant to get you both informed and inspired in becoming the best version of yourself. In 2019, he publishes books for young athletes with Granity Studios and also has his fourth daughter, Capri. On January 25th, 2020, LeBron James passes Kobe on the NBA's all-time highest career points and writes Mamba on his shoes to pay respect. Kobe responded positively with a tweet, which would eventually be known as his final tweet. Congratulating LeBron James and showing how the Mamba mentality applies to bringing up yourself and others. Just the next day, on January 26th, 2020, it was a foggy day. Kobe, 13-year-old Gianna, and six family friends, plus the pilot, got on a helicopter. Most air traffic was grounded due to thickening fog. Flying low to sea, they crashed into the side of a mountain in Calabasas. Everyone was killed on impact. Despite this tragic accident, Kobe will be eternalized in his achievements on the court. And even greater, he will be eternalized in the minds of the people. From him crossing our minds every time we need to throw something away, to his efforts in giving back to the community, to the powerful message he wanted to spread in his writing about the Mamba mentality. Everything that I've done throughout my career, it doesn't just stay in the history books. It doesn't just sit on the mantle in the form of trophies and gold medals. It means that the legacy is passed on.
Kobe Bryant made a decision early on in his life. Had he decided to give up on basketball because he was discouraged by the competition, we wouldn't know him as the Kobe we know him as today. And who knows how many other times he would have given up on himself throughout the rest of his life. He made the decision to embrace something that pushed him towards greatness. It would become known as the Mamba mentality. It's this intense mental fortitude that you use to attack your goals with killer intent. His Mamba mentality is what led him to be compared to Michael Jordan and other greats in basketball. Yet by retirement, he was already becoming obsessed with a new goal. Everything he learned from basketball was about to be applied to his writing career in order to make a name for himself in the literary world. And he was no stranger to hard work. He knew it would take hard work. He knew that he could apply his Mamba mentality beyond basketball. After watching interviews of him talking about his mentality and then doing my own research, I distilled his mentality into a few different things that he did to become the best version of himself, both mentally and emotionally. Mentally, he does a few things. The first thing is setting goals, giving yourself that clear direction, making sure that you have a way to quantify your progress and to know what you actually need to work on in the first place. And when you're setting goals, you need to remember that you can't be everything. So whenever it comes to it, you need to focus on certain things. And that requires you to look at strengths and weaknesses. Weaknesses can be obvious to identify because they produce inadequate results. And you might wanna work on them to at least get them to a minimum, but realize that your weaknesses might never be a true strength. Uh, quickness, I was quick, but not insanely quick. I was fast, but not ridiculously fast. I had to rely on angles a lot more. I had to study the game a lot more. Strengths can be harder to identify out of self-bias, especially when you're outshined by competition. Just look at Kobe, that first summer, he didn't score a single point, yet he knew he was a shooter because he could read the game and he knew that could be a strength that he could turn into a great strength. So it was worth the effort. And the third thing to consider is the compound effect because the sheer amount of work that you do every single day will add up in a year and you will quickly outpace all the competition because you simply outwork them. Now keep in mind, you only need a certain amount of rest and recovery before you can go back and hit it again. So whenever it's something as technical as shooting a hoop, you definitely can go in there multiple hours per day and get very, very good. Now emotionally, the mama mindset encompasses three main things. The first thing is resilience because it's hard work. You have to show up and then you have to perform to make something of yourself, not just being present, but actively building the person that you wanna be. The second thing is to perform particularly on game day, because when your team's counting on you, the fans are counting on you, and also you're counting on yourself, you need to bring it. If you are not able to perform whenever it's game day, it doesn't matter how much preparation that you've done. It matters that people can count on you to bring results. And the third thing is to kill it, to be ruthless, to bring your best, to not be intimidated by anyone else. Kobe looked at Michael Jordan as someone he greatly respected, but was not going to be intimidated by. You're not intimidating me, yeah. I'm not going anywhere. And I think he saw that level of respect. He was going to give his best to the best. And it didn't matter who they were. He was always going to bring what he knew he was capable of. Now keep in mind, these are mental and emotional skills. They'll need to be developed, but once you develop them, you can apply them to any goal. Just look at Kobe. He could have been great at many things. I mean, he literally went straight from the NBA to win an Academy Award. But don't misunderstand, he's selective about what he focuses on. He only wants to put in the energy into things that can produce results that he could be great at. He's not going to waste his time on something that he might just be kind of good at, kind of mediocre. He wants to do things that he could be a champion in. But that can be hard because it requires you to look at yourself and to see who you could be and to believe that you're capable is know that whatever you're doing is worth the risk. Kobe wasn't looking at the risk of failure whenever he started Granity Studios to work on his writing career. All he saw was the life that he knew he was capable of. And when you think about writers, writers have a message. And Kobe's was the Mamba mentality. And he wanted to make sure that different groups of people could understand exactly what that meant. More mature people could read about his story and then learn about how to become the person that is intentional, that can set goals and become a high achiever. For younger people, he turned the mama mindset into fictional stories to get a better grasp on the mindset that it takes to build greatness in the future that they're currently building. I believe he saw a lot of power in his message and I believe that's also why he wanted to be known as a writer. 50 years from now, how do you want the world to look at Kobe Bryant? You know, as a person that was able to create stories that inspired 
their children and families to bond together and for their children to dream and have the initiative to wake up every morning and do all they can to help that dream become a reality. He wanted to be known as a writer because he believes that his message was more important than any other story that he's told with his life. So let's talk about it. It's time for the big truth. Kobe Bryant is an example of what it takes for talent to become great. It doesn't happen without the work. And it doesn't happen with just any work. It takes intentional work. And that work is hard to do day after day, year after year. People don't naturally have that motivation inside of them. And that's why Kobe's message is so powerful. And here it is. We need to be intentional about the story we tell ourselves. The story we tell ourselves can be a limitless source of energy to do the hard work because it never gets easy. And the story that Kobe Bryant told himself was to be the vicious black mamba. It created a clear direction for his life, a path to stay disciplined on and not just to do whatever he felt like. On his best days and his worst days, he put in work. That was his mamba mindset. Puts it back in place, he goes. Athletic trainer Gary Vee put it back in place. You can see just there. Anyway, as soon as he covered his knees, it was a done deal. This is the story that he lived, and he wanted to show it to others through his writing. His life showed its power, but his writing could show that it's possible in other people's lives. And it's not just about being better, it's about being the person you can be. Because if it was just about being better, you would stop as soon as you're ahead of the immediate competition. When Kobe lived in Italy, he thought he was great at basketball, but then he moved to America and got put in his place. And this shows how misleading immediate competition can be. And that's why your story should not be about others. It should be about what you can do, who you can be. And then you operate in a league of your own because you're not worried about what others think. You're focused on achieving your maximum potential. People have been talking about comparisons with Michael Jordan for years, but more now than why? ever. Why? Why? Okay. Come on. I mean, let, let, just let me do me. I want to be the best I can be. You understand what I'm saying? Like, Mike, Michael is Michael. Let me be me. <laughs> you know, this is, we're, we're different, different people. It's this mindset that he wanted his legacy to be because he saw the power in the story that he told himself. And if we want to continue on his legacy, we need to fill our head with a story that we want to live, to create our own Mamba mindset, to commit to telling ourselves the story of the person that we could be. And most importantly, spread the message to others so it lives on in them. The Mamba mindset is about being intentional with your mental energy, to put effort into what you care about most, being intentional with your focus, to become obsessed with the story that you will create and being intentional with where you take your life and the person that you will become on the way there. So in the face of possibilities, what's worth your intention? And that's for you to decide, so let me know if I got anything wrong in the comments below or if you think I missed something. Share this with a friend who needs to develop their Mamba mindset so that they can smash through their goals. And don't forget to like and subscribe because this is going to be a series where I analyze people's lives and then I determine what makes them iconic. And I hope this inspires you to start living your own iconic life because I love to make a video on you one day. My name's Chase Rebordi, reminding you that life is a game to so start winning. And I'll see y'all in the next one.